Hi, it's Dave here, Megapoints Controllers. On this video, I'm going to walk you through the Megapoints Controllers multi-panel plug and play starter kit servo edition. So in this one box, you'll have all the electronics goodies to control up to 24 servos with two servo controllers. And also you'll have the multi-panel, which is the controlling brain behind a mimic panel that you can construct yourself or have built for you. So let's see what's in the box. Some promotional material, sticker, the quick start guide. This will walk you through connecting it up and uh, getting it going, or you can watch this video. So in the box we have servo controller number one, servo controller number two. So we have the first 12 here, the second 12 here. We have the multi-panel processor. This is the brains of the control panel. This out of the box can control 24 channels, but can easily be expanded to 192. We also have a pop-on switch for the servo controller. So this can drop on and allow you to locally control it or configure certain options. It's quite useful if you're underneath some baseboard, you can connect this switch and operate the servo channels directly without having to walk back to a mimic or control panel that might be a few feet away. It also comes with a cable pack which contains the necessary cables to hook all of the boards up. And it also has a sample button and a sample LED pair for you to plug in. So jumping forward, I've unboxed the multi-panel, the cables, the pop-on switch, and for the servo controllers, I'm using two attached to my demonstration boards so that you can see I have 12, 24 servos all attached. That simply makes the desk a little bit tidier for the demonstration. So I've attached 12 volts power to the multi-panel and I have 12 volts connected to each servo controller. So when I power up the servo controller, you'll observe, because I've wired up some buttons here, that each servo moves as expected. On the second servo controller, I've unplugged my switches and I'm going to use the pop-on switch assembly, which simply plugs in where the connectors go. And what this does is it wires up all of these servos to these switches. So if I flick a switch, you can see I can manually control the servo. So effectively, I've saved you having to wire up any buttons because they've all been done for you. So I'm going to take the LED cable with two LEDs on it and I'm going to plug it into the multi-panel into channel one here with the black lead facing towards the outer edge of the board, like so. And you can see I have an LED on and we'll wire up a button as well. So let's take the button and the cable, plug one end of the cable into the button board, doesn't matter which way round at this point. There are two connectors in case you want to wire the same switch to a pair as a crossover, but for now we're just using one. And again, connect the lead with the black lead facing towards the outer edge of the multi-panel, again on channel one. And we can test it works because when I press the button, you see the LEDs flash and then the opposite one stay on and so on. The LED is in the right mode if you have the master or the left LED permanently on and the run or the right LED flashing about once a second. So we're good to go at this point. So if I power up the first servo controller, what I'll do is I'll take one of the network cables and we'll plug it in. So what I'm doing is I'm going to connect the yellow lead to the SDA connector, which is the outer edge of the board here on the network connector. If you look here, there are two sockets, so you can connect devices in either direction. It doesn't matter which way you do it, but I'm taking the top socket and I'm going to plug this in with the yellow now going to the top of the servo controller. Now at this point, if you press a button, nothing happens. Nothing happens other than the lights flash because the servo controller is in master mode and you can see the switch is driving it. So what we need to do is change the way the servo controller works. Turn the power off, press and hold the low button and turn the power on. And you'll see the LEDs flash. Once they start flashing, alternately you can let go of the button and the unit's now configured. And in fact, you can see that the um, servos have already moved as commanded by the multi-panel. So if I press button number one, 
you can see the servo is moving. Wait for it to stop flashing, press it again, and it moves back. So it's swapping position. Now, I could move the switch down all the positions to test all of them, but there is an easier way. If you take a small screwdriver and you're careful, all you have to do is short each lead out. So if I take the next one, there's the servo moving, and number three, and number four. In fact, I can do the first 12, and there they are all moving. Let's get them all up level. Two, three, and four. So now they're all pointing, uh, pointing upwards. And if I move the screwdriver down, now they're all lying flat, except number one, which is on a switch. I can rinse and repeat here as well. So that's working fine. Let's bring on the second board. Now the second board, we also want to change its address. And the way we do that, the default is address number two, and you can check the address because when you turn the power on, if you watch the channel light, I should see two flashes. One, two, channel two. So what I'm going to do now is put all of the switches to the right, and then the top one I'm going to push to the left. Now when I turn this on, I'm going to hold the low and the program buttons down, the two on the left, press them down, turn the power on. And when I see the lights flashing, I can stop, and I should get one, two, three flashes, and this board is now configured for the next channel. Take another cable, unravel. I'm gonna be consistent with the way I plug it in. So yellow to the top, and I'm going to daisy chain this to the other servo controller. But I could plug it in here if I wish, it doesn't matter, as long as it's connected. Plug it in, and we're hooked up on the second. And you've already seen there, the servos have moved as commanded by the multi-panel. So if I take my screwdriver on channel 24, you see the last one is moving, and back. So if I run it along the next 13, you can see I've managed to move them all. In fact, let's do them all. I don't recommend this when it's installed, but it's a fairly simple test and you can see it work. To do it properly, take my switch, plug it into channel 13, take the LED light and plug that into channel 13 as well. So now I should be controlling this servo, press the button and away it goes. And that's the basics of getting the starter kit going. At this point, you're free to install your servos under your track and you can watch the servo installation videos we have there. Mount your servo controllers where they need to go, near the servos so that you reduce the wiring and then you can just daisy chain, extend this as you need with a telephone or alarm type cable and bring one of the cables back to your multi-panel, your control panel, which will be probably where you're sitting. This pop on board, once you've set the board up and we did it setting the address, you can take it off and store it and hopefully you'll never need it again because the unit will continue to work perfectly without it. So this completes the introduction of the starter kit. I hope you've appreciated that I haven't done any soldering. I ha the hardest thing I've had to do is to connect power to each board and I'm using a 12 volt regulated supply or in the case of these I've actually got them running on a 12 volt battery. Set the addresses, plug in the servos here and we're good to go. Thanks for watching.